Hello guys, this is Debbie from One Day, One Mother. Every family has a story. Welcome to ours. Today I want to discuss psychological trauma and from my experience. It's been almost three and a half years ever since my daughter Cynthia passed away and with everything that is going around us today in the world, I decided this is my time to talk and it's my place to help other mothers, other parents who are going through a loss of a child. When I talk of psychological trauma that I experienced, first, when I received that call that my daughter Cynthia has passed away, I was in a denial stage. I, that's not me. It cannot happen to me. I felt scared. I was scared. I was worried. I was confused. I had regrets. I was guilty. And when I talk of me having regrets, when, when Cynthia passed away, I wasn't in the US, I was in Thailand. I had gone to Thailand for a business trip and this is something that my daughter Cynthia and I, we worked so hard for it. And I left to go and follow up this business, only for me to get this call three days after I was in Thailand that my daughter has passed away. The regrets I had was, if I had stayed in the US, was this gonna happen? If I was not thinking about a business, was this gonna happen? The guilt that I had was, did I tell my daughter that I love her enough? You know, your, your mind just start to reflect on different things. So those were some of the guilt that I had. And, and down the road, when I started feeling a little bit better, I said, no, I shouldn't be guilty. Because my trip going to Thailand was for our benefit. It was for our our family future. It was for something that I knew down the road it was gonna help my kids. Some of the psychological issues that I had, I held on Cynthia's telephone. Her number, I couldn't let it get disconnected. I held on it. I made payments on my daughter's cell phone for almost six to eight months. I was paying monthly on that number. And the reason I was doing that was for me to call Cynthia's number, for me to hear her voicemail. So you see, you, you start to, to hold on things because you don't want to let go. Psychologically, my mind says, when you call and hear her voice, you're gonna feel better. But guess what was happening? Whenever I call her number and I let it ring, it goes into her voicemail. Then the voicemail comes up and she leaves this beautiful message that she's not available right now. Please leave a message. I was leaving messages to Cynthia. It, it was so funny that I was doing it daily. I would hide myself because I didn't want my families or friends to know what I was doing. I will leave a message. I said, Cynthia, this is what I did to them, mommy. Uh, mommy, I was so tired today. Uh, mommy, I went to the hospital. Mommy, I went to, you know, it's like my way of communicating with her. I held on it so much. And the times that when I leave that message, I will start to cry. But finally, I was advised to let it go. And that number was disconnected. So that was 
and that was something. It, it, I, I started feeling a little bit relieved that it's not in my mind anymore that I have to call Cynthia. Another thing that I, I, I gravitate on was how her work bag. She had a beautiful bag that I had purchased for her at, um, I think, I, I, I can't remember what store. But she loved that bag. And uh, she was using it as her work bag. She put her uh, the computer, her laptop, her, you know, just her daily, the things that she's supposed to use at work. I used Cynthia's bag after she passed away. Every day, I'm going to the store. I'm going to my doctor's appointment. I put my things in that bag. I was holding on that bag. Mentally, I'm holding it for my baby. I'm still, I'm still holding my baby. We, we, we were so lucky that we could, we were able to share t-shirts, blouses, and shoes. We had the same size pair of our shoes. I, I recall sometimes when she comes from from Tennessee to visit me, she would tell me, "Mommy, I'm going to shop." She would get into my closet, and when she she walks out, she said, "Thank you so much. I got enough for today." So it, it's funny that when her belongings were brought back to Maryland, I was holding Cynthia's walk back to do everything. I would use her shoes, her sandals. All summer of 2017, I, I was putting on Cynthia's sandals. You, you know, it, it's, and that's why it is good for us to seek for help. I accepted help, which is not part of our culture. I am from Africa, and I know majority of Africans do not believe in seeing a psychiatrist to go and talk to somebody about your pain, to talk about what is going on in your life. But it helped me a lot. I learned a lot. I, I released my pain by talking to a stranger. It, it, it's very helpful. So I'm here to advise and to, to suggest to my Africans audience that it's not a taboo for us to go see a psychiatrist. When you are going through a trauma it may be a divorce, it may be loss of job, maybe loss of a child, a family, a loss of a family member, just so many things. It's good when you go and talk to somebody. Some of the things that I was going through holding, after talking to a psychiatrist, it, it, I started finding myself letting, letting things go, letting, letting, letting things go gradually, and it, it came in real handy. So my advice is that we should talk to God. That's the most important person you want to talk to. Because with Him, everything is possible. I'm sitting here today telling you my story. It's because of God. Because of the help that I received from the psychiatrist. Because of the help that I received from my the siblings, my kids, my surviving children, my friends and family members. That's why I'm here. I'm able to sit down and talk about my story because it's just so much that I experience. Um, that is something that will occur in every human being's life. That losing a child, it's a different story. So, Let's find a way again as Africans to forget about we are strong enough. No, we are not strong enough because by you going through this trauma, there's so many things that will affect you, your well-being. First, you're going through sleepless night. You don't sleep. You don't have the appetite to eat. You're losing weight. I lost a lot of weight. 
I think about 40 pounds after the loss of my daughter, Cynthia. So we need to ask for help. We need to, to get resources. There's so many, there's so many things that I found online. There's so many programs. There's so many groups. There are groups of mothers who've lost their kids. There are group of parents who've lost their kids. There's, there's the, the, every county, every state, hospitals, churches, they have programs that will help you cope. And I have taken advantage of most of these programs. And that's why I am able to sit here today and tell you my story, of which there's still more to come. Again, it's a world that is difficult to understand. But I am giving you my, I'm letting you know this because it's something that I experienced. And it's good for me to help other mothers who are going through this now that Debbie has been there and Debbie is sitting here today because she went through that. I am not an expert, but I'm telling you from my experience, this is the reality that I faced. And I'll keep on facing up till today. And this is going to be part of my life till I die. You know, so those are some of the things that we got to, to, to count on that. So long as we're alive, they help. So long as we're able to reach out to people, the people who help you go through the situation that you're going through. And another thing that I... I think it's good for us to understand is that whatever happens to us, we should thank God. We should tell him, Daddy, thank you. And I'm saying that because there was a time that I almost asked myself, where is God? Why me? Then I reflect and said, no, Debbie, you don't need to say that. You don't need to ask why you. So what I can tell to close this um, topic of my psychological trauma is that we should always, always thank God. Because there was a time in my life when I was going through that, that pain. I asked myself, I said, God. Daddy, why me? And I cut myself real quick and said, No, Debbie, do not ask such a question. Why you? You got to be grateful. And what I did, I said, Daddy, I thank you. I am grateful. I am loved because you gave me that opportunity just to be with my daughter for all those years. You allow me to carry her in my stomach. You allow me to take care of her from when she was little until the day she died. You allow us to have family times, family phones together. You allow us to fly around the world and have fun. You, you gave me that opportunity for me to sit in the kitchen and cook with my daughter because Cynthia was a very good cook. So. When I think about all those things, my daughter graduated from school. She was educated. Cynthia had two master's degree. So I, I sit and said, oh no, daddy, I can't, I can't ask you why me. I have to tell you, daddy, I am grateful. I'm thankful. And so I know when we're going through pain, the times that we'll forget that, we got to look behind and say, Daddy, God, help me. Be with me. And this is what God has done in my life. He has been with me from the day I was born to all the things that I've gone through life up till today sitting here. 
telling you about my story. So when I get up in the morning, the first thing I say is, thank you, Father God, for today, and I am begging you for tomorrow. So again, this is my story. This is part of my psychological trauma that I went through. Please feel free to subscribe, hit that notification button, comment, send your comment. I, I, I want to learn. I want to I want to learn from other mothers. I want to learn from other parents. I want to I want to listen to how you cope, what you did. I I I just want to. This is a platform where I am lucky enough now that I have that strength to talk about my pain, and I would love to hear from so many viewers. Again, thank you for watching. This is Debbie. From one day, one mother, every family has a story.